So we got a question from our buddy Ryan who's rolling in his gym. He's a white belt. He's been training for about a month. He says that he rolls with guys in his gym that are pretty much everyone's like 40 to 50 pounds heavier than he is. So the question that he has comes down to the fact that when he's rolling with some of the people, a lot of times what will happen is, is he will control the round, right? He'll control most of the round that they have during rolling and then towards the end of it, he'll gas out. The person will get to a dominant position and basically at that point, he's just can't, he feels like he can't breathe and he's forced to tap. And he says that most recently a person got to mount and kind of came down with his body, knocked the wind out of him and when he tapped, the person got kind of frustrated with him because he tapped too early and he's wondering what he should be doing in these situations, um, you know, when he's training. So, Ryan, thanks for the question. And I relate to you a little bit because I had the same situation happen to me when I was a white belt. Uh, I'm gonna take my lovely assistant, Mr. Adam Wilson, I'm gonna show you kind of what I would do back in the day. Back when I was a white belt, I, I would use my wrestling, I would get to a dominant position and I would dominate a lot of the role but the problem was, is I was constantly in this <laughs> sort of mindset. So I remember I would like, you know, like go for a key, key locks and just, I would crank too high. It wasn't really a good submission. And I might go for an arm bar here. So here, and I would just, but like keep trying to go really hard. Like I would just use all my muscle. I wasn't thinking about anything else, about setting up the grips properly. I was just trying to use as much muscle as I could. The person would somehow defend and then eventually they would make their way on top and then they would get to mount or somewhere else. I used to be really claustrophobic when I was younger and so they would be here putting their chest in my face like this, slash me, and a lot of times, woo I would tap. Now, eventually, my coach, two things happened. One time, my coach said, no, he's a purple belt right at the time. He goes, no, you're not tapping out. Like, you're gonna have to fight through this. You can't tap out every time someone gets on top of you, right? Which is, in your situation, you, you have to train yourself not to tap from those positions. He may, the person that you rolled with, like you said, may have knocked the wind out of you, but I promise you, you can fight through that. So here's what you're gonna do. When they somehow get on top of you in a bad position, you're gonna bring your elbows in nice and tight so that they can't submit you, and you're gonna relax, and you're gonna go, and breathe, right? A lot of times I would do a breath and I would keep my elbows in really, really tight so this way they're not gonna arm bar me, right? It's really hard to arm bar someone if your elbows are in tight. The arm bars typically happen when you're more in a panic state and push up, okay? The second thing that happened to me is that I got caught in this position and the first thing was my coach. Second thing was is that I would look around at people and I noticed that everybody else would fight from this position but for some reason I was tapping out and I didn't wanna be, you know, for lack of a better term, I didn't wanna feel like a bitch with my training partner so I was like, no, I'm gonna fight through this. So again, take that mentality. Take a big deep breath, bring your elbows in breathe, right? R relax, that'll get you through it. Pr trust me, you can make it through it. I know it may not feel like it. Second thing is make sure that you're not exhausting yourself like I was. I don't know if you were because again, you didn't go into the details about the, the specifics of the role, but a lot of times I see this happen with white belts. They will try to crank a submission or a move that isn't, it's just not right, right? Things are missing. And so, for instance, if an arm bar. If I get to this position, right, go ahead and lock it up for me here, doing something, right? He's doing something that I can't break. I need to assess why that is. I see a lot of the white belts where they'll just sit there, crank, and they'll waste all their energy. There was one tournament in particular, it was at the Arnolds in 2004. I was in, the, I think it was the semifinals, and I went against this guy. I had him in a key, key lock right here, and I was lifting up, and I was like cranking all of my weight. Baby. I'm, it's a terrible position. This is not the right key lock, right? This is not the, the correct way to do a key lock. We need to drag it down. But I was lifting here, and I was holding my breath and <laughs> squeezing. I wasted all of my energy. He rolled me over and then gave me the business afterwards and submitted me. My big thing for you for that takeaway would be make sure whether you're doing a sweep, a submission, a doesn't matter what you're doing, even a position, right? Make sure that you try to go back to the feel that you have of that movement from your training. When you're drilling the technique, when you're doing the stuff with your coach, or when you're, um, you know, when you're doing the, the, the technique, technique part of your classes, make sure you go back to that and try to find that feeling Right? So this way you don't basically burn your muscles out trying to do something that's not gonna work, right? Take, take a look at what's going on, try to get to that right feel, and then, then execute, but don't do it beforehand. So, fill of techniques, right? Fill the positions, make sure you go for the right technique instead of just wasting your energy on stuff that's not gonna work, and take a deep breath and relax when you get into one of those really bad spots. And trust me, those two things will help you out a lot, Ryan, and I hope that helps you out with your training. Adam? Adam. <laughs>